So if you don't already have your camera set up for video or for live streaming, you can go ahead and follow along with this tutorial. We'll be using the Sony ZV-E10 for this particular training. If you already have your camera set up, you can go ahead and skip ahead to the lessons where we dive into setting up your live stream show. But if you're ready to begin, we're gonna dive right into the menu. So the first thing you wanna do is turn your camera in the on position. And then you wanna make sure that you have a fully charged battery. That way you're not gonna worry about your camera running dry as we go through the different settings to set you up for USB live streaming as well as HDMI. But let's dive into the USB settings. To get the best quality, we're gonna use live streaming natively through Ecamm Live. That way you can choose to live stream in 1080p or in 4K. If you're using the native option to live stream for this camera, you're only gonna be able to get about a max resolution of between 720p and 1080p. It'll still look very good, but it won't be as good as the native integration with Ecamm. So you wanna go through your network. It's gonna look like this globe setting here. And we wanna come down to PC remote function. This needs to be in the on position for the PC remote. And then for PC remote connect method, we have this set to USB. These are the only things that you need to change here. Just if you're curious what I have on page two, uh, still image save destination is set to PC only. That's not relevant here. And all of these other options are grayed out either because we're connected via HDMI so that you can see the screen. Um, or for other settings that are set in the camera. Now, if you notice that you're not able to adjust the PC remote function, let's say you get some kind of error message or something, you'll need to come up here to the smartphone connection. Make sure you have this set to off. For whatever reasons, in some of these Sony cameras, you have to have something off before you can enable other things, and this is kind of one of those functions. So that means you would not be able to use your smartphone at the same time of having this camera connected via USB-C for live streaming with Ecamm. So you wanna make sure that that is disabled. And that's everything that you need to do if you're ready to live stream in Ecamm. And here's an example of using the Sony ZV-E10. And this is only using the USB natively built into Ecamm. So this way you don't need any capture cards. You don't even need to change any real settings in your camera other than what I've already shown you. And you're good to go for most of your Sony cameras. Depending on what model you have, these placements may be in a different place, but for the most part, you should be good to go. So if you notice how easy that is and super simple, that is why a lot of people love to use the USB option and it actually charges your camera battery at the same time. So as long as you also have that option turned to on, later I'll show you some of the best settings when it comes to live streaming that you, you can quickly change in your camera. But I wanna show you how to set this up for HDMI. When you're using an HDMI option, you do wanna make sure you're using a capture card like we talked about before, that's gonna capture the image from your camera and send it to your computer. You will need a couple things, which is a USB micro or whatever your camera takes to HDMI. Then you want to have your capture card and from there, you want to have a USB 3.0 or better to connect to your computer. You can also get USB-C and that way it will connect into your actual Mac if that's what it takes. And that's what most of the time Mac computers take these days. Let's dive into the settings so you can get set up to stream via HDMI. When you go to the menu, you wanna select the toolbox or I like to imagine it as a suitcase and come down to where it says HDMI settings. From there, you want to go ahead and click on it. I prefer as far as a resolution, the 2160 to 1080p option so I can make sure I'm getting the highest quality possible, whether I'm choosing to stream in 1080p or 4K. And then for it to be 24 frames per second or 60, I usually choose 60 since that's some variation of a 30 frames per second. When it comes to the HDMI info display, this is very important. For the purpose of this training, this is set to on, but you wanna make sure you have this set to off. That way you do not see any icons, menu information, or anything while you're streaming on your camera. While we're here, let's go ahead and go over to page three and enable USB power supply and turn this into the on position. When you come over here to your camera, this may be set to off, but this way you can recharge your camera via USB-C, but you can also um, actively power your camera via USB-C. We actually recommend that you use an AC option that will connect to the wall when you have that available or even to a power bank if you're uh, using that, but this way it actually works for you if you're on the go or traveling. And I absolutely love to use it with a power bank um, when I'm using streaming options or recording long periods of time. It does a really fantastic job. So you definitely wanna make sure this is set to on. 
So now we're connected via HDMI and we have made sure that the icons are disabled so that you don't see any of the auto focusing box and things like that. But this is what you can expect if you connect via a capture card via HDMI. And I really like to use this option. That way I'm free to charge the camera if I need to, but either option is very viable for what you want to do. It's just, if you're in a home stationary setting, I find that HDMI is best and then using an AC power option. But this is what you can expect if you're connected via HDMI. Now that you have all of your settings adjusted so that you're able to actually live stream with your camera, let's go into some of the best settings that you can use when it comes to live stream over in the next training video.